We are going to discuss the math section of the SAT exam. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the perfect square method. I recommend you to pause the video and do the question and then check with my answer. That would be the best way to score high marks. Let's start with this introduction. Suppose we have a quadratic equation like ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we have to represent this as a perfect square method. So first of all, what you do, you take the a coefficient out. So then what you have is x squared plus b divided by ax plus c divided by a. So now what we are going to do is, we are going to take the half of this factor. Then we can write a x plus, once you take the half of that factor, you get b divided by 2a, the whole thing to the power 2, plus c divided by a. Now what we will do, we will try to get the square of this, and then always you have to minus it. This is the most easiest technique that you can do like this. Now, if you want, you can simplify this bracket and then check whether you get the initial statement. So you would get it. So now if I rearrange this, it would be x plus b divided by 2a to the power 2 and then here i'm going to get the uh, common denominator so that would be 4ac minus b squared divided by 4a squared so that would be the um, perfect square method so why we call it perfect square now if i write the left hand side i'm basically copy paste what I had before. Now you can see here we have two x values. That means two um, the x variable is um, shown in two places. Now here you have that in one place only. So this way of simplification make your life easy. So next we will talk about a few examples. So in our example number one, suppose you have x squared plus 5x plus 7. So you have to represent this as a perfect square method. So you will notice that the coefficient in front of x squared would be 1 and the coefficient uh, of x would be plus 5 and these are the two things that you have to um, sort of understand so I'm strictly following what I did before so 1 is the coefficient with x squared I'm going to take it out and then I have x plus 5 divided by 2. So I'm doing the same thing what I discussed before. So b divided by 2a part is here, 5 divided by 2. And I'm going to write 7. Then what I will do, I will minus always the square of this one, which is 25 divided by 4. So if you do that, that would be the perfect square method. So now it's just a matter of simplifying the inner pieces. So here you have denominator one. So what I will do, if you get the denominator four, so this is going to be 28, 28 minus 25 is going to be three, three divided by four. So this is going to be the answer when you apply the perfect square method. So, now we will discuss another question, question number two. 
let's take let's take uh, so we will have x squared plus 4x plus 1 so similarly we will identify what are the a values b values and c values so i'm going to take one out so then i will have that so it's the same thing then what i will do i will um, take the half of the coefficient four so i can write plus two squared then what i will do i will keep plus one and always i have to minus what i have to minus the square of this term which is four then i will have x plus two the whole thing to the power two and minus three and that would be the answer to that question and uh, uh, let's talk about another question here so that would be x squared plus 6x plus 2 now we can directly write this one as x plus 3 squared plus 2 i'm going to keep and then i have to always minus so i'm going to minus the square of this which is 9 so you can have x plus 3 squared minus 7 and that would be the answer to that part so now let's talk about another question question number four let's take x squared plus 6x plus 11 so what we will do here we realize that the coefficient in front of x squared would be one and then directly i will use the perfect square method plus three squared so the half of this and then i will keep plus 11 always you have to minus the square of this which is nine so you will get x plus three squared 11 minus nine would be two and that would be the answer to that question now fifth question um i will take a very similar one x squared plus 3x plus half so if you have that you get the half of this which is 3 divided by 2 square of that and plus half you're going to copy that then you have to always minus always minus the square of this one which is 9 divided by 2 and then when you simplify that you get x plus 3 divided by 2 squared now you have to get the common denominator over here you multiply by 2 denominator by 2 then you get 2 minus 9 would be minus 7 divided by 4 and that would be the answer to that question now sixth question we will have a different coefficient in front of x squared so 2x squared um, minus 5x plus 1 here what you will do you have to take 2 out now so that would be x squared minus 5 divided by 2 plus half here now you have to always keep 2 out now you have to do the uh, factorization here so if you use the perfect square method so you have x minus half of this half of minus 5 divided by 2 that would be minus 5 divided by 4 the whole thing squared and you are going to copy this term over there and then always you are going to minus the square of this one so square of minus 5 divided by 4 would be 25 divided by 16 and then close bracket now what you will have 2 x minus 5 divided by 4 this is not the problem 
the problem will be here. So you have to have the common denominator. You're going to multiply this by eight, denominated by eight, so you get 16. So eight minus 25 is going to be minus 17 and divide by 16. And that would be the answer to that question. So this is basically it for this video. Check the link below for more videos. Thank you.